Hi, welcome to our series on unsung heroes. My name is Jeremy. Uh, today we're going to be talking about an unsung hero that you'll find in the book of Exodus, chapter 18. Uh, we're going to be talking about Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. Um, but before we dive into the scripture, I just wanted to share a couple stories um, with you. Um, so when I was 16 years old, um, I did what a lot of kids did and had a job. And so um, while I was in high school, I was uh, working. I'd been working at, uh, at a uh, fast food restaurant and then moved over um, to a retail space and worked in the shoe department. Well, while I was working there, one of my managers, uh, unfortunately, was someone that no one liked. Uh, she was really pushy. She was uh, kind of went over the top. I was a close talker, so she got really like right there in your face the whole time. You're trying to take a step back. So she takes a step closer towards you. Um, it even got to the point that she made a mandatory meeting at her house, uh, which I was like, okay, well, that's weird. So people would come to actually socialize and have a cookout. Like that was the point of the meeting. There was no meeting. It was she was making it mandatory so we'd come and socialize. And so as a 16-year-old kid, uh, and I worked there for a while and under her for, uh, for a bit, it really became kind of a weird situation. Um, but as of a lot of things, I learned as I've gotten older, as I've started uh, researching and looking into leadership and leadership um, fundamentals, that really that was a great example of poor leadership. Uh, there was a great example that was trying to... Uh, really trying to lead through intimidation, uh, trying to lead through, uh, through being really ugly uh, as far as attitude was concerned. Um, and so I really don't even call her a leader, I call her a manager. Um, she was definitely falling under that manager title and not the role of a leader. Well, fast forward a few years, and I start working at my school's athletic facilities department, um, and my supervisor there uh, is wonderful and has a heart of a teacher. And so he is uh, makes sure that me, as an 18-year-old kid, he tells me things like, hey, here's how you negotiate a contract. Here's how you negotiate your salary. Here's some things you do on how you can lead people. And actually gave me responsibilities, allowing me to lead other students and being uh, a supervisor. And so I had to be responsible for scheduling. I'd be responsible for making sure that I could make budget um, for payroll. And so I got to learn a lot of great leadership lessons. And so he took the time to invest into me. He took the time to pour into me, to answer my questions, had an open door policy, and was willing to make sure that I understood uh, what it meant to be a leader. He wanted to make sure that I was developed as a person, developed as a human being, developed as a leader, because he saw leadership potential in me. He saw that I had the ability of being able to move forward as a leader. Then fast forward even more years, and I had the opportunity to be a business owner. For anybody who has been a business owner or is a business owner, you know that being a business owner can be some of the loneliest times um, in your life. Because the weight of the world falls on your shoulders, whether your business makes it or not falls on your shoulders. And so you're always worried about uh, what does everything look like? Am I doing things right? Am I developing my team well? Am I developing uh, relationships well? Am I serving my clients like I need to? So all those things are always running through your head. And so I learned a lot about leadership through that experience, but also learned a lot about being lonely. A lot about being um, lonely. I didn't have a great system set up where I had other leaders that would pour into me, that I could reach out to, that I could ask questions of, that I could seek advice and get help. So we see in the book of Exodus chapter 18, another great example of leadership. We see an example of leadership from someone we may not expect. Normally we look at the book of Exodus, we're thinking of, of Moses. We're thinking of Moses, thinking of his story, the fact that um, even though he, he had a, a humble beginning, um, being there in the, um, in the Nile River, placed in a basket as a baby, uh, being raised uh, by Pharaoh's daughter, um, and so really became part of the family. And so he became royalty um, instantaneously. 
but he failed. He killed an Egyptian. He ran away scared, hiding. God appeared to him and he became a leader. God called him out as a leader and said, I have called you for this moment. I've trained you for this moment. I've made sure that you are the person that I need to tell my people that they are going to be free. They're going to be free from their bondage and lead them to victory. But see, Moses couldn't do it by himself. Moses couldn't do it by himself. He had Aaron who helped him, who was a spokesperson to Pharaoh, but he also had someone else. And so as we look into Exodus chapter 18, we're actually going to see who else Moses had. We believe that this is the inspired word of God. And those who read and obey this word will find life change and transformation. Will you pray with me? Father, as we seek after you, as we seek your word, seek wisdom from your word, Lord, we ask that you're with us, that you guide us, that you show us what we need to do, that you illuminate our hearts and open our minds to gain wisdom from you as our lives are changed and transformed. Amen. And so we're going to read through the entire chapter um, of Exodus 18 uh, as we look at Jethro and the role that he played in Moses' life. Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her home, along with her two sons. The name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. And the name of the other, Eleazar, for he said, The God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness, where he was encamped at the mountain of God. And when he sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her, Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare and went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord, Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had come upon them in the way and how the Lord had delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done to Israel, and that he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, because in this affair they dealt arrogantly with the people. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. The next day, Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me, and I decide between one person and another, and I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You're not able to do it alone. Now obey my voice. I will give you advice, and God be with you. You shall represent the people before God and bring their cases to God, and you shall warn them about the statues and laws, and make them know the way in which they must walk and what they must do. Moreover, look for able men from all the people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate a bribe, and place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. And let them judge the people at all times. Every great matter they, will, they shall bring to you, but any small matter they shall decide themselves, so it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, God will direct you. You will be able to endure, and all this people also will go to their place in peace. So Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, 
chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. And they judged the people at all times. Any hard case they brought to Moses, but any small matter they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went away to his own country. And so we see there in the book of Exodus chapter 18 that Jethro was was a big influence on Moses. We see that Jethro had a big impact on Moses' life during that time. But see, Jethro couldn't have had an impact on Moses' life if he didn't already have a relationship with Moses. And so we look there um, at the beginning, we see that they greeted each other. Um, He kissed him, he bowed down. Moses bowed down at Jethro's feet. They had a relationship. He was happy to see him. He was glad to see his father-in-law. He was glad to have time to spend with him. We then see down in verse 13 that Jethro didn't jump in and say, hey, you're doing everything wrong. Like he didn't come and tell him, hey, you're crazy. Like, what are you doing? You're nuts. He watched, he observed to see what was going on. He didn't take any notions out of his head or preconceived notions about what he thought might be going on. He wanted to see for himself what was happening and what was God doing in the life of Moses. We then see in verse 14 through 16, Jethro begins to ask questions. He begins to ask questions that kind of dive into into what Moses is doing, that dive into asking Moses, what exactly are you trying to get out of this? Like, what's the purpose behind what you're doing, and why are you doing this action? What are you hoping to experience? We then see after Jethro has established a relationship, after he has watched and observed, after he's asked those questions, he then begins to show advice, give advice, and show Moses another way. And so we see in verses 17 through 23 that Jethro presents another way for Moses, another way that's going to help Moses to not wear himself out, to not, um, as we say, burn the candle on both ends, to not become a leader who's not leading effectively because he's trying to do too much. He's trying to lead too many people. He's trying to take care of too many things. But Jethro has wisdom to show Moses a different way of leading, a different way to lighten the load and saying, hey, there's people there that you can train, that you can equip, who can be chiefs and leaders over thousands, over hundreds, over tens. And we see in verse 24 through 26, Moses actually listened to Jethro and implemented the plan. But see, Moses could have very easily just said, Yeah, whatever, Jethro, like, you don't know. You haven't been here with me this whole time. You haven't been here or watched this. I mean, God made me responsible for these people, so I just need to do it on my own. Like, you're crazy, but he didn't. He understood the wisdom that Jethro had. He understood the wisdom that his father-in-law had. He understood how important it was to have someone in his life as a leader who could pour into him, having someone as a leader who could take time out for him, having someone that as a leader that he could listen to and lean on for making important decisions, someone who could see things from an outside perspective and really had his best interests in heart. See, we all need Jethro's in our lives. We all need people who are looking out for us and for our best interests. People who are willing to go uh, before go to God for us, to intercede on our behalf, someone that we respect, that we value, we appreciate their opinion, someone we have that relationship with, that we've built that relationship with, someone who's willing to watch and listen. They're not just going to start telling you what to do, but they're going to take the time to watch, to listen, and see and observe what's going on in your life. Someone who is seeking after God, placing God first. So when they offer advice, when they offer suggestions, when they offer a different way to go, when they offer a different direction, you can trust that what they say is true because they've been seeking after God. They have a heart that follows after God God first. And so the wisdom that they share, the direction, the guidance that they give comes from God because they've got that relationship with God. 
See, leadership isn't just about the leader. Leadership is about the impact the leader makes on the people that God has put in their charge. I'm going to say that again. Leadership is not about just about the leader. But leadership is about the impact on the people that God has placed in the leader's charge. And so wherever God has placed you as far as leadership positions, you may even think that you're not a leader. You need to know that God has placed you in leadership in some way. It may be that right now he's training you up for leadership. It may be that right now that he's preparing you to be a leader. He's giving you those life lessons. He's giving you those lessons out of his word so that you know where uh, you need to lead. So that you know who you need to lead. So just a few leadership lessons that we can learn from Jethro. First, spend time with God before you do anything. Before you ask any questions, before you seek a new direction, before you want to change things up, spend time with God first. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to speak to you, to instruct you, to tell you what to do, to help you know what direction you need to go. Number two, you need a mentor. You need someone who has your best interests at heart. Someone that's looking out for you, someone that has the relationship with God and has a relationship with you that can speak truth and life into you and tell you and help you and guide you as you make difficult decisions. You can't do it on your own. So not only do you need a mentor, find a group of people that are other leaders that you can work with people that you can co-encourage each other, build each other up, uh, run ideas off of. And next, make sure you take the time to train, to equip, to empower people that are coming behind you that are going to be leaders, future leaders. That's what Jethro told Moses to do, is you've got these people here who are ready to lead. They just need a little bit of guidance. They need you to empower them to be able to make the decisions, to be judges, to actually help make those decisions for the people, but they need your guidance. And so we have to be willing to train up the next generation of leaders, to train them up, show them what to do, and throughout this, never stop seeking after God. See, we seek after God first, but throughout the whole process, we never stop seeking after God as leaders. We never stop seeking after God as leaders. We never stop trusting God as leaders. And so wherever God has called you to lead, whatever position God has placed you in, just know that God is with you. God will guide you. God will, God will direct you. God will put people in your path that will be that mentor. God will people, put people in your path. There'll be someone that you need to lead, someone you need to pour into to help them develop their leadership skills. Will you pray with me? Father, there's so many things we can learn from your word. So many things we can learn from unsung heroes, from those who we don't focus on enough. Father God, sometimes we feel like that's our story. Like everyone else is more important. Like everyone else gets the spotlight and no one even knows that we're around. No one knows we exist. No one knows that we're doing anything. And we feel like our lives aren't making an impact. Father, help guide us. Help redirect us. Help change our focus that we're not worried about the things of this world. We're not worried about accolades from people, Father God, but we are trusting you. We're seeking after you. We're moving forward with you. And knowing that you are at work in our lives. And if we keep doing what you've called us to do, the impact we're having is a kingdom impact. And the things we do matter. 
Who we are matters. Who you've created us to be matters. In Jesus' name, amen.